human beings typically don't have a whole lot of bandwidth. And by that I mean when they look at the broader picture of history, they typically look at it in terms of years, decades, their lifetime, maybe the previous generation, maybe the generation before that generation, and that's about it. And so any analysis of societal problems, social concerns, or what have you, will typically be limited by what we'll refer to it as a historical bandwidth problem, not looking at the big picture. Well, if you've been with me for a while, I like to look at the big picture. There's a smaller picture to look at, as always, the micro versus the macro. But very often, the micro problem is simply a symptom of the macro problem. And I think nowhere is this more true than looking at the mating and dating crisis. We've talked a lot about this. A lot of people have talked about this. It's now officially a mainstream issue. Where have all the good men gone? What's happened to men? Women are outperforming men, blah, blah, blah. Every facet of it, in as much as that facet of the discussion is permissible to address within mainstream media, has been talked about. But again, very few people are looking at the broad trends over long periods of time. So the question I seek to answer today is, how did average men become invisible? How did average men go from average to below average? Now, everyone will have a hair trigger response to this question, and we all know what that response will be. Oh, it's the apps. It's the internet. It's online dating. The last 10 years, of course, right? And that is a huge factor. There's no doubt about that but it's a symptom of a greater trend that we can observe over time and history. And basically I think that we're experiencing a certain type of population bottleneck, not a classic one by any means. By population bottleneck, usually that's characterized by a drastic reduction in the population due to a variety of events. And the population bottleneck we're experiencing right now, I believe is due to certain cultural, technological, and biological events that are unfolding before our eyes which is to say there are and will be large swaths of the male population that are not and will not be reproducing, which is to say they will not be passing on their genes. Something that we have to remind ourselves is very common in human history. Roughly twice as many women reproduced as men. Men overall have a lower reproductive success rate compared to women for obvious reasons. Sperm are cheap, eggs are expensive, Pretty much anyone is willing to knock up a woman if the only criterion is getting pregnant and giving birth, fair enough. And so right now, we're in the midst of a very specific type of population bottleneck event, I think. And it is worth investigating as to why and how we got here. So one thing needs illuminating, and that is whether or not overall, historically, women really liked the men they ended up pairing up with. And there have been several people, including a mainstream guy like William Costello, the evolutionary psychologist, who acknowledges that it's quite likely, if not probable, that in the past women were pairing up and reproducing with men that they didn't like particularly. And broadly speaking, I've talked about this a lot, women on average don't like men. Women don't like the average men. They don't want to associate with them. They don't want to talk to them. They want basically nothing to do with them. And they certainly don't want to be gawked at by them. So why was it that in previous times, average men were able to pass on their genes? Well, it all comes down to utility. You see, I think there's an inverse relationship between the technological advancement of a society and the relative perceived utility of a male. The short answer to this question, of course, is that back in the day, women needed men, and they put up with things that they didn't really like because they needed men. This is, of course, related to the harshness of the environment as it existed for the vast, vast majority of our species. And we've seen different shifts in populations before. I've talked about this a lot. Right around when agriculture started gaining importance, women dramatically, en masse almost, shifted globally to partnering up with men that had agricultural prospects rather than hunter-gathering. And for a while, cultural momentum kept the train chugging along in the sense that if you look at the 19th century, if you look at the first half of the 20th century, what you see is, yeah, average men still getting theirs, as it were, marrying, having children, etc., etc. But it becomes increasingly more difficult because this inverse relationship of the attractiveness or 
appeal of the man relative to technology. Well, what does technology beget? It begets ease, ease of living. And so people are wont to blame feminism and various cultural changes and institutions, and they're not entirely incorrect. But you have to understand that, and I've been saying this for over a decade, you don't get feminism and the radical shift in institutions, cultural shifts, without technological shifts that allow for it in the first place. There's a reason why you're not seeing feminism in 1323. It should go without saying as to why, but the technology was pretty lacking and the institutions matched the setting of the time. And so, yes, you can look to cultural, political, and social changes for sure, but you don't get them without radical shifts in the technology that lead to a greater ease of existence. The greater the ease of existence, the less men are valued. Now, there are some nitty-gritty details here, and the nitty-gritty details are the fact that a lot of this is perceived and illusory. It's not that men's utility is objectively less than it used to be, but their perceived utility is less than it used to be in the eyes of women and broadly in the eyes of society. Because the ease of society and the technological developments are a consequence of men doing the things that men do. Somebody is keeping the power lines up. Somebody is collecting the trash. Somebody is maintaining the sewage system. All these things that allow for the illusion of inutility of men. But unfortunately, oftentimes, perception is everything. And so you end up in the situation with respect to women that they perceive men to be just pretty much useless because women overwhelmingly are unaware of these silent and very important contributions men are making. As status-obsessed creatures, women look to the professions. Doctors, lawyers, these things are important too, but without the bare bones minimal of men to maintain the power grids and the basic functioning of society, you could forget about the professional classes even existing. There's an asymmetry here. So really what this boils down to is a perception of what average is. But perception, as I said, oftentimes is everything. If women perceive average men to be below average or invisible, i.e. they're not perceiving them at all, then that becomes a reinforced reality, whether we like it or not, and leads to what I believe is a minor population bottleneck of a certain segment of the male population. Averages are not permanent. Averages shift all the time. If you went back to 1700 in the Netherlands, you would see that the Dutch were not particularly tall. At this current moment in time, although that's shifting, the Dutch are the tallest people on planet Earth. There's some competition with the Balkans as well, specifically Serbo-Croatia, but the average height of a Dutch man is still approximately six feet, and the average height of a Dutch woman is approximately five foot seven. In the case of men, that is massive. Think about average. That is not the average in the United States, which has many different ethnicities. That is not the average really anywhere on the globe, except, like I said, a small area of the Balkans. And even women being five foot seven is pretty damn tall overall. Well, like I said, if you went back 300 plus years, that wasn't the case. How long have the Dutch been the giants they've been? Roughly 150 years, not much longer. And so within a few generations, they shot up massively. There are different theories to account for this. Some people cite the dairy consumption. I don't think that's true. There are plenty of areas of the world where you get massive dairy consumption, but you do not get this huge growth spurt. I think it really just comes down to sexual selection. My point is, is the Dutch were not always tall. And whatever we regard as average in old-fashioned terms as men is now the new below average in the eyes of women due to these factors that I've talked about. There's some sort of inverse correlation between technology and the ease of civilization and the perceived utility and appeal of men, which means that civilization itself, long-term, carried with it the seeds of destruction for a not-so-small segment of the male population. Up until a point, male utility 
was a thing that could be spread out and women would still pair up with them. Remember, women are pickier than men and they're almost as interested in looks as men are, typically. And now that they have carte blanche to do what they want, they are doing what they want. And this was probably inevitable. If you want to create a complex, technologically advanced society that makes life really easy, women are going to shift their focus and interest in the type of men they pursue. It's just that simple. And that is my broad take on what's happened, basically. It isn't just Tinder. It isn't just social media and online activity. Yes, these are huge accelerants. But we're looking at the tail end of a trend that has been ongoing now for centuries, in some sense. It was all working towards this end. And unfortunately, there is no good answer to this question. Nobody has one. And to be even more frank, nobody cares. Let's be honest, average is now below average and a new average is emerging. And this average is replacing the old average. And when I say average, I mean average income, average looks, average traits in terms of personality, what have you. And it's mostly based on perception, but that doesn't matter. Perception can lead to new realities at times. What can I say? Welcome to civilization. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons and PayPal donors. You guys are the best. You keep the channel alive and going. It would not exist without you. And if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz of liking the video, subscribing if you're not new, subscribe or leaving a comment, sharing, etc., etc., really helps. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out next time. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye bye for now. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.